Welcome back friends. In this video, I'm going to be switching out the caliper on my 2005 Honda Accord. I can do a whole story time on that Honda Accord later on in life, but right now, we just need a caliper. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my channel content for more, and hey, have fun. Well, my 2005 Honda Accord that I acquired, whole story time aside, needed a front brake caliper because the bleeder screw had rusted to the point where it snapped. Well, I had a brake caliper sitting around, ergo, I stuck it on it. Replacing a caliper isn't all too difficult. It's a really simple process all in all to do. Now the main concern though is, if you don't bleed the system out of air, then obviously you're going to have a mushy pedal. And in this case, I already bled the system out when I was pushing down the pedal, so keep that in mind. I did bleed the system with the pressure bleeder. I didn't do the whole one, two, three, hold, closed, release. I didn't do that whole system. So I did the pressure bleeder where I can just attach it to the top of the uh, master cylinder and it pushes new fluid all the way through the system to where I'm working. I did also spray down the car with Dawn dish soap and to kind of neutralize that brake fluid. And also keep in mind, brake fluid is hydroscopic. It attracts moisture. You don't want to leave the cap off for too long. and You don't want to have used brake fluid. So keep that in mind. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So just gonna turn this wheel and tire like this. Using a 19 millimeter, I'm just gonna zip off this hubcap wheel assembly. like that. Set the lugs aside, take the hubcap off, set that aside, take the wheel assembly, put the tire, wheel and tire on. Gonna turn this over just like that. We have a bleeder valve that broke on here, so we just gotta replace this whole caliper, and I've got a caliper for my Honda Accord, 2005 Honda Accord. That needs to be replaced, and yes, I am using an old part. Using a 12 millimeter, I'm just gonna loosen and remove these two caliper slide pin bolts. There's one. There's two. Using a 14 millimeter, I'm gonna loosen in this banjo bolt. This fluid is hydroscopic. It is brake fluid. It's gonna drip, so make sure you put a pan down underneath, and I can loosen the upper and lower bolts holding the caliper in place. There's the first one. Here's the second one. Putting those aside, I'm going to loosen the banjo bolt, making sure it comes free. Now using a 17, a long ratchet. I'm gonna loosen the upper bolt, holding the caliper bracket in place. Now loosen it the rest of the way with my normal 3H drive ratchet. Take a flathead screwdriver and jam it in here. There we go. Make sure the banjo bolt comes free. Or the fitting, because I'm going to be reusing it. Cool. Should give me enough to pop this up and out, just like that. Using some different gloves, now that I've got them on, I'm just going to loosen this bolt. There goes the banjo, uh, the crush washer. And there's our caliper. Now I can remove this bracket and service this bracket. Removing the lower and upper 17 millimeter. And we see that these don't move. So I gotta break those free. Alrighty, I'm gonna install this bracket that I had sitting around. Ugh. This bracket is the uh, other caliper I had sitting around. So I'm just gonna install that loosely on here for the time being from another car using those two 17 millimeters this back side I'm just going to snug these two down okay there's one there we go now torque goes down in a little bit oh there. so 79 foot pounds for the upper and lower Okay, 
All right, torqued. Because these are both stuck in place, I'm going to just pop them free. And these definitely need to be replaced, obviously. Avi. And then I'm just gonna break this one free. Just like that. So now I'm gonna install the outside pad, just like this. Now I can slide it, that's good. I'm gonna do the same for the inside pad. Just tuck that in there, slide it in. There we go. I'm gonna stick this backing plate on it for the inside pad, making sure that they both move and release when needed. There we go, cool. I'm gonna stick this old caliper on that I had sitting around for this car. Slide it up like that. Taking those 12 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper bracket to, sorry, the caliper to the slide pins, I'm gonna slide those back into place, just like this. Just gonna snug those down. Just snug for now and we'll torque them down later. 36 foot-pounds. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure using a socket and a ratchet that this bleeder valve opens. Oh yeah, there we go. We opened it. Reinstall this banjo bolt right here. I'm gonna make sure I have the first seal. It goes on the inside, and then I'm gonna catch this with the outside. So just like this. And then I'm just going to screw it into place. Then I'll torque that down. It's held in by that 14 millimeter. When I'm done, you want to spray all this down. And the reason I cracked the bleeder valve open is so that it gravity bleeds while it's inside of the master cylinder. So overall, all I have to do is torque everything down and then I can start the bleeding process. 25 foot pounds for the banjo bolt here. I'm just gonna torque that down to spec. Okay, all right, after it sat for a little bit, I'm gonna tighten this up. So now knowing that this piston has fluid in there, I'm gonna tighten this up and pressurize it so we can get the piston to touch the brake pad. After all that, this thing is ready to go. I just pressurized it and everything's good to go. And uh, stick the pressure bleeder on it and uh, yeah, that's all I gotta do. Now I can reinstall the wheel and tire. Along with the hubcap. Making sure that the Schrader valve goes in its respective position. Taking a single lug nut to make sure this thing doesn't fall. I'm just going to tighten one lug nut down and then kind of just spin the rest of them around. And yes, I did spray the brake fluid off this car. Brake fluid is hydroscopic, so it attracts moisture and we don't want to leave the bleeder valve open for too long, nor do we want to have brake fluid on any paint on this car, considering that there's already paint deterioration on it. Now I'm just going to lightly tighten these down. Okay, now I can torque those to 86 foot pounds. Lower so the wheel touches, but do not lower all the way. And just to show you, we've got 86 foot pounds. Only reason I'm supporting it is because I'm pulling up and not down. Kind of go through it again. And the car's done. So how was that? It wasn't really difficult to do at all. All it is, two 17 millimeters, two 12 millimeters, pop that caliper, pop the caliper bracket off, 
Oh, it's all so simple. Now, I did pressure bleed the system, as I said, so it's not going to function until after you bleed the system. I just didn't show it in the video. So keep in mind that I pressure bled the system. You do have to bleed out the air from the system. I cannot stress that enough. You cannot just drive on it after you replaced it. It's not safe. Hopefully this video aided in serving some sort of reference on how to replace your 2005 Honda Accord. And this can be skewed across like 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007 Honda Accords. But hopefully it helped. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my channel content for more, and hey, have fun.